Hey there, YouTube land, Big Dave here. So, um, September's coming really fast. You know that song, I'll see you in September. Um, that's happening really fast. And um, I thought for those of you that are going back to school and, um, you know, you're going to be playing your instrument and all that stuff, uh, I'm going to go over a couple things to think about. Okay, so the first thing is, see if you have pencils in your case. Um, this is like one of my big things. It doesn't matter what level you're playing at. It's elementary school, middle school, high school, college. It doesn't matter. You should have pencils in your case with erasers that work and a separate eraser. Um, you often have to mark something on your music so that you know what's going on. If you go to rehearsal and uh, the director, the, co the conductor is saying something and you're sitting there in outer space, you know, um, not really connected to what's happening. And if you don't mark it down with the pencil, it's not going to be happening. You're not even going to remember it the next time. And whoever's working with you just wasted their time because you really weren't prepared. See? So get your pencils out. Have them in your case. Have them on your stand and be ready. Okay, next thing. Reads. Have a few extra reads. And I would say try some reads out and see which ones work and which ones don't work. Um, and make little marks on the back. Put the date. You can use your pencil. Put the date. And then have a system that works for grading the, the reads. You know, like um, I personally, I use like G if it's good, NR if it's not ready. I don't throw reads out. I put them in a tin or something, and then I might get back to them another time. Could be a year, two years, three years. I don't know. It'll just sit there. But I'm not going to worry about reads that don't play right now. If the reads don't play, I put them in a tin or uh, a container. I mark them with the date, and I put NR on them. They're not ready. But you can have your own system, whatever you come up with. Um, if it's an okay read, I put okay. If it's a good read, I put G. If it's very good, I put VG. If it's good plus, I put G plus, you know, that kind of stuff. It's like if it's the greatest read on earth, you know, um, I put like VG plus. But they're going to change. The weather changes, you know. So uh, test out a couple reads. Have three or four reads that work. Put them in a little holder or just have them off to the side so you know which ones work and then the ones that don't work. Now, if you find your read is uh, maybe on one side, Maybe one side plays. Test both sides of the read. You know, turn the mouthpiece in your mouth. Check both sides of the read. If the one side plays great and the other side is really stuffy and it doesn't play. So usually what happens is the problem is around here. Not so much up here. The problem is usually down here. And it's off to one side. It's not balanced. So what you can do... And this is a perfectly safe tool that you can bring to your school without causing a, um, you know, one of those disruptions. Um, you can bring a, just a little emery, wooden emery board. You get them in the, the dime, you know, the, uh, they used to call it the dime store. Now it's called like the five and ten on the corner or the, the, you can go to like, you know, Walgreens, CVS, one of those places. Okay, so it has a rough side and a smooth side. Start with the smooth side. And you can work that reed. Learn to work the reed up. And blend the reed up this way. Okay. Sometimes it's the edge. You can just take the edge off gently. Now, if you find it still doesn't play too good, and don't take all that, just take dust off. You know, you work your way up. And just blend it up. But stay away from the tip. Try not to work the tip. If you do, you just got to go really light around and blend yourself in. You're just taking dust off. Remember that. You shouldn't be gouging anything out of a reed. Okay? That's another reason why it's great, you know, not to get involved with a, a tool in the beginning. Because if you don't know what you're doing, um, it's better to just use one of these. I can use one of these, no problem. I don't need a knife. I don't need a tool I don't need anything I can just use one of these okay and I can make my blending adjustment with this if you have a clarinet cut this in half 
it fits in your case easier. And then you'll have two of them, right? Okay, so there it is. So that's your read issue. Um, but again, just remember, you're only taking off dust. All right, next thing. So maybe you're in pep band or, uh, you know, marching band or one of those things. And you want to have a mouthpiece to take outside that's kind of loud, but is not real expensive. So here's what I recommend. The good old Rico Royal. Now you can still get them. I, I looked online and they're all over the place. So they're still around. Because the company changed, you know. Rico is the Dario now. And I don't know what's going to happen with these mouthpieces. Um, anyway. So here's the deal. They come in three um, insides. A, B, C. B is like medium. You know what? I wouldn't bother with the A's. If you play alto, an A3 or A5 is okay for classical music. You know, but you don't really need that. I'm talking about outside marching band uh state you know pet band outside you get a c c is the loud chamber and get a five or a seven you know on a tenor i would get a seven a c7 and don't use too hard of a read on it it's loud it plays outside and these are like you know not a real lot of money so you're not bringing your really expensive mouthpieces outside you could still use it for other stuff you know but on a tenor i would get like a c7 on an alto, I would get like a C5. And don't play too hard of a read on it. You know, like start with like a two and a half and, and see how that plays. Okay? So this is good stuff for, um, you know, and you can get them on Barry too. Um, that's it. And if you find, if you put one of those clear pads on the top of it, because this is more like plastic, you, your teeth won't bite into the top. Okay? And it also cuts down the vibration. Um so there you go. Okay, next thing. Um, well, let's stay on the mouthpiece for a minute. So let's say you're going to audition for uh, regionals or one of these things, and you have to play classical music. You know, um, well, let's talk about that mouthpiece. My first choice would be a Van Doren in the V5 series. Okay, this for tenor is a T35. But they make them for alto also, like a, um, A25 or A20. It's good if you can go try them on your horn. Um, but these are really good mouthpieces. This one, I don't know if you can see how much wear this has on it. This mouthpiece is probably 25 years old. This is a T35. I've used this at all kinds of uh, classical, quasi-classical, professional wind ensemble things. Um, and you can put just a medium read on it and it plays great all the way down to the low notes and all that stuff. Here's the problem with those closer mouthpieces. Like, the, um, you got to use sometimes a harder read. The low notes sometimes are trickier to play. Um, and it doesn't give you the flexibility to cross over into more like pop music kind of thing. It's hard. So if you just want one trick and just be able to play through all your music and stuff, I really, really, really recommend these Van Doren V5 series. On the alto, you know, the old stand by the C star, it's great. I have them. I have a whole draw full of them, you know, but I don't play alto hardly anymore. But um, I like the A25, you know, I think it's, it's a little bit darker than the C star. It has more flexibility. It articulates faster. So you check it out. See what works for you. I'm just giving you a suggestion, you know. That's it. Okay, next thing. You want to see if your horn works. Now, so the big thing is, this is my friend. My friend is this blue tape. Okay, so you take this when it's dark. You take the little flashlight and stick it in the top and turn it on. And check this top stack to see if this top key is going down properly with this key. If it's not, you have to find out where on the side the um, lever pushes, okay? Um, if you just push this top one down, you'll see what happens here. It's this little lever that's making that work. If I can get mine to go, you'll see it. You see that lever that moves in there? 
you you have to look to see which one is controlling pushing this key down if this is not going down all the way um, find out where the lever works which is like back here I just showed you before and on that rod you can cut off a small piece of blue tape and put it around the rod it'll take up the space and close this key all right sometimes it's only off by just a hair but if this key doesn't close your whole horn doesn't work you know and also check these top keys now if these are no good you have to go to the repair person and have these changed but if this is just a little bit off on the adjustment you can use a small piece of blue tape around the rod to give take up the space to close this uh, top key back down the other one is the G sharp the G sharp has adjustment it needs to close when you if you leave the G sharp push down push down your F key and C watch the G sharp goes down with the lever that's on there you might need to adjust that screw a little bit um, again at night it's easy to use the flashlight in there and look down um, I have this there's a pad under here that's why I have blue tape I have a rubber pad that because I use special fingerings for certain um, advanced notes you know harmonics altissimo I need this key to close exactly the way I need it to close now another one that sometimes doesn't close and you'll see I have a double layer of blue tape here is on this when this goes down I want this to be completely exactly down now I can go to my repairman and have him change this but it may not still be exactly what I want I want this to close exactly the way I want it to close and so I use one or two layers of blue tape underneath this to get this to close um, you know you can always have this adjusted professionally later on if you need it um, and then of course check your paddle keys now if your paddle keys aren't closing and I gotta watch the time here because they're gonna shut me off you know what I can't go over the 15 minutes okay so if these aren't closing well what I would recommend is get get yourself some cork and make yourself a spacer so when you put your horn away you close these keys down and leave them shut I have another video on that about making cork you just cut the cork and make cork the space in here and keep these closed when you put your horn away after a while you know the impression will be better and it'll close and of course you know you have to check out everything there see but the biggest trouble is the ones I just showed you it's up in this uh, upper stack okay so there it is um oh oh I'm sorry and I wanted to tell you make sure that your neck joint works and that when you push the octave key you have enough little space in here that this key closes completely if this is not going down all the way because this is out of the way you might have to slightly push in on this and adjust it ever so slightly to make it fit okay again go to your repair person um, but you're not always going to be able to run to the repair person every time you turn around you have to know how to do some of this yourself okay so listen those are my tips and um, practice when you get music from whatever ensembles you're in practice there's no there's no substitute play your scales slowly um, you know what I don't usually say long tones <laughs> practice slow intervals fourths fifths practice slow intervals hear pitch sit at the piano sit at the keyboard play the notes play long slow intervals me personally I don't really practice long tones overtones I practice I practice slow intervals practice slow scales okay anyway have a great time